Hey guys, welcome to part two of our Building a Hollow Body series. If you are brand new here, please check out part one. It's probably somewhere over on the side here, or I mean, it's in our channel. If you just go to our channel page, you can find it. While you're there, be sure to hit subscribe and maybe give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Really, today we are going to be making a guitar neck. Um, so as you can see, I mean, a lot of the work is already done. So I hope you don't really feel cheated out of anything, but we do this stuff well in advance of building the rest of the guitar. The reason being, and if you can see this here, this is our neck blank, and we already have it pretty much contoured. We have our headstock angle and everything put in, um, truss rod slot. The reason we do all of this stuff in advance is because with any wood, I guess we'll take it to like a 10,000 foot view. Um, as a tree is growing, there is a ton of stress put on it at all times. I mean, the thing weighs several thousand pounds. There's all sorts of external factors, wind, rain, things like that, that put stress on the tree and create tension in the wood. Well, when you mill into any sort of wood, you're gonna end up releasing some of that tension and that's gonna cause twisting, warping, things like that, that in a guitar neck aren't very good. So we build our necks about three weeks in advance of the bodies, or I guess we start them about three weeks in advance of the bodies, just to make sure that any twisting, warping, we get all of the tension out um, by building it slowly instead of trying to rush through a guitar neck and you know you end up with a final product that twists and moves. Um, we do this to create the most stable and resonant base for our necks possible and give them the best possible chance of surviving in the wild. Um, we have, again, this killer ebony fretboard that first things first, we are gonna go get our fret slots into this and then we'll get it mounted, do all of our inlay, and hopefully have a guitar neck here in a minute. teeth on this saw blade are 23 thousandths of an inch wide and that's exactly how wide our fret slots are. The way we end up cutting those is we have our jig here with our 25 and an eighth inch scale. We're going to double sided tape this template to our fretboard here and then load it all into this little carrier and you can see these notches in our template are actually going to fit right on that little sail and will hold the fretboard down as we run it across our saw blade. Let's set to the right depth and then we'll end up with a fret slot.
is a laminated abalone sheet where you can see one side has that nice, all of those blues, a lot of greens. This other side isn't quite as nice because I think this is, I don't know, must have something to do with the laminating process. I don't really know how it works. All I know is it's a whole lot easier to get it into these sheets. It's a lot less wasteful to buy it this way. And this is still, you know, genuine abalone shell. One thing we haven't really talked about yet is registration. All of our templates line up on these little registration pins right here. It's just 1 16th brass rod. And that's especially important on the neck to keep everything aligned. Uh, you want to be able to, or you want you know, your frets to be exactly perpendicular to the center line of the guitar. And the way we do that is all of our templates line up on these holes. So that way we can pop our fretboard on and off and have it be in the exact same location every single time. Our templates go on every single fretboard exactly the same every single time. And even like our head cap template here, you know, that winds up in the same place on every guitar. So that way, you know, our headstock is exactly the same, our fretboards are exactly the same, and I just pulled the pins out with this so I can't show you what our head cap would look like. But as you can see, we have the same holes drilled in our head cap. Yeah, so that's how we keep everything perfectly aligned, making sure that your intonation is as precise as humanly possible when the guitar is all finished up. So next up, we are going to radius our fretboard and touch it up before we get some frets installed. We're gonna glue our head cap on, shape our headstock, and start sanding our neck. It's really hard to film on our fretboard radius jig, but I do like to finish off all of our fretboards by hand with a standard radius block. As you can see here, we're using the uh, 12 inch radius side. Um, that just, you know, any slop that there might be in the machine using this block and sanding by hand helps get that out, helps make sure our fretboard is completely straight before it gets put on the neck. Just like that, our fretboard's level. Got our truss rod in, registration pins are all in place, and we are ready to glue up our head cap and our fretboard. We've already dry clamped everything to make sure the glue joints look good. So now let's find our bottle of glue. Usually we do these guitars in batches and there's about three to five of these done at a time. Um, we're going to let this sit for about an hour and then we can unclamp it. Um, everything looks good all clamped up. I'm not seeing any gaps anywhere we need to adjust. Um, we don't use a whole lot of clamping pressure for this joint, mostly because a 
good glue joint shouldn't use a whole lot of clamping pressure. All you want to do is hold the two pieces together until the glue dries. The reason we actually clamp it up with our three C clamps and then we use spring clamps for the rest of it is because sometimes the moisture in the glue that we use can cause corners and edges to warp. So in the main part of our neck, where we're not as worried about that, we can use these seed clamps and this clamping call. But just to be safe, we use these spring clamps on the end. So after all of that, here's where we're at. We got a body, we got a neck, we got a really good neck joint. I mean, look at that, that's not even glued in there yet. Yeah, next video is going to be us sanding the heck out of this guitar and maybe staining it depending on how long the sanding takes. Yeah, we're super excited. Hopefully, you know, we'll have this sealed up and ready to go, ready to head to the lacquer shop by the end of the week. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and check out our channel for more guitar related content.